Hello, everyone. Well, first of all, I've got even, uh, gr very good news. Our channel now has over 300 subscribers. Thank you all to all the new subscribers. I'm just getting started here. Um, and I will be posting a lot more content. As I said, um, I'm working on improving the sound quality, the camera and all that. It takes a while. You've got to bear with me because I'm very new to this uh, technology, but uh, I'm getting there. So anyway, uh, one of my, I don't know if, if the person is a subscriber or not, it doesn't matter, asked me to do a video on half angle, the sum and angle difference formulas in trigonometry. Now, unfortunately, I do not, ha I will not be able to do this uh, this weekend. The person's test is on Monday, today is Saturday, and I have just so many things going on. I will not be able to do it, but I am doing this as a favor because one of my passions is mathematics. So I decided that I, I just couldn't bear not doing anything about it. So the first thing, so this video will be extremely brief given the time constraints that I have. So when you're dealing with the sum and difference formulas in trigonometry, I strongly urge you to use this table. These are the special cases of triangles. So you start with 30 degrees, 45 degrees, 60 degrees. Some instructors go with the unit circle, which is good too. But I'm only dealing with, uh, from the triangle point of view here, the triangle perspective, you need to know these special cases. So unfortunately, like I said, this is, there's a lot to say about this, but I'm doing this a really, really short video because, I mean, I could get into the proofs and everything. We'd, we'd, we'd be here like hours. But basically, if you are taking a, a short test or a quiz or something, what you're going to deal with is they're going to give you the, uh, an angle value in degrees, let's say. Sometimes not, but I'll use degrees for our purposes in this video. And what you do is they're going to ask you to use one of the formulas. Now, the formulas that you need for, so like I said, you have to use this table. And let's see if we can do an example. So let's say you had the, the 105 degrees. And we wanted to figure out, let's say you wanted to figure out the value of the of all the trig functions here. So what you do is, of course, this makes it harder because in the sense that, you know, it's not a special case. So you have to think like, okay, 105. Well, that's not really common. How can we break this down though? Always ask yourself that question when you're, do when you're doing these things. So you have, I know that 45, if you look at the table, 45 and 60 actually give you 105 degrees. So now, when because you're adding them, you can actually use the addition, the sum uh, relationship. So this becomes the sine of 45. If it was now, I'm going to look for sine now, right? 45 plus 60 degrees. And this makes things a lot easier, doesn't it? Because now the formula says that you need to, by the way, I'm not posting that. Like I said, this is a really fast video. You need to know your formulas here. Um, I'm just going to plug it in, but you need to know your sine formula, your tangent, et cetera, which can be found easily if you, um, if you do this. So what I do is when I'm looking for the sign, I'm going to multiply the first one, the sine of 45 times the cosine of 60. So now you have the sine of 45 times cosine 60. I usually use parentheses. And now you're going to add, you're going to switch it around. You're going to do the cosine of 45. times the sine of 60 degrees. All right, now it makes your life so much easier because your table, if you know these special cases, right? Look at your table here. The sine of 45 degrees is actually radical two over two. So now you just pl you're basically just substituting at this point. So I'm gonna go ahead and use red so you could follow along the steps. So it's radical two over two. 
multiply that by what? What's the cosine of 60 degrees? It's a half. Plus, what is the cosine of 45 degrees? According to our table, the cosine of 45 degrees is radical 2 over 2. We're going to multiply that by the sine of 60. The sine of 60 degrees, according to our table, look what it says. Radical 3 over 2. And now you just evaluate the expression. You have radical 2 times 1. That's just going to give me 1 radical 2 or just radical 2. On the bottom here, when you're multiplying frac, these are fractions. When you're multiplying fractions, you multiply the numerators and then the denominators. 2 times 2 is 4. That's going to give me 4. And then I'm going to add that to this right here. 2 times a uh, radical 2 times radical 3. That's going to give you radical 6. And you divide that by 2 times 2 again. That's radical, well, just 4, actually. There's no radicals. So now you can either... It depends on your instructor. You can either keep it like this as your answer, or you can factor out the, um, the one fourth and keep the radicals inside. So you can either, and then if you do it this way, then you would be inside radical two plus radical six, All right? That's not difficult, is it? So you're just evaluating the, you're just plugging in the values of these uh, degrees once you break it down into factors. All right. Now, what if you wanted to find out? So we've used the sine of 105 degrees. Well, what if I wanted to find the cosine of 105 degrees? Well, the cosine is 45 plus 60. Again, we're using those factors. And the cosine, you have to apply here the, since you're looking for cosine, you must apply the sum formula for cosine. Now, the sum formula for cosine is, just as a recap, cosine of A times the cosine of B minus the sine of A times the sine of B. And of course, A and B represent two number, two different numbers. So we could say A is 45, B is 60. So now you could just plug it in. What is the cosine of 45 degrees? According to our table, look at your table. The cosine of 45 degrees is actually radical 2 over 2. So you plug it in. And that is going to be multiplied to the cosine of B. The cosine, well, B is 60. The cosine of 60 degrees, according to your table, is one half. So now you just do radical two over two times a half, subtracted by the sine of A is, well, the sine of A is radical two over two as well, multiplied by the sine of B. The sine of B is going to give us the sine of 60 degrees, which is radical 3 over 2. Beautiful. Now we can just clear this out. Radical 2 times 1 is radical 2. Radical 2 and then 2 times 2 is 4. So we have radical 2 over 4. I hope I have room here. Minus... Radical 2 times radical 3 is radical 6, so it's going to be radical 6 over 4. And it actually fits in just about. Radic or you can factor out like we did last time. We can take out a quarter because the, com the denominator here is 4. So it's really 1 over 4. And then you could do, you could keep the radicals in the parentheses. Radical 2 minus radical 6. It took us less than 20 seconds about to do this. So... Again, when you're, eval when you're using the formula, just see how you can break down the angle. And if it's like this, of course, and see if you could use that table. The other thing that I, um, let's see if there's time to do another one because I had another one for you. Uh, what about tangent? What if you do tangent of 105 degrees? So 
for tangent, again, you're gonna use the same numbers because that's how we broke it down for the others. So the tangent formula is you take the tangent of A, you add the tangent of B, and you're going to divide that by 1 minus the tangent of A times the tangent of B. All right, so we said that the values were 45 and 60 because that's what makes it easy on our table. So we have the tangent of 45 degrees, according to the table, is, um, where is it, 1. So we now have 1 plus radical 3. Divided by one minus one times radical three, which actually gives us one plus radical three divided by one minus radical three. Right now, when you have something like this, you have to do something called rationalize. Very important. If you haven't done rationalize, you should review that rationalize the denominator. You usually do that by the conjugate of the denominator, which in this case, you switch the sign. One minus radical three becomes one plus radical three. So your expression now becomes, I'm gonna use red. So we're gonna multiply this by one plus radical three. over one plus radical three. And that's going to clear up your denominator, at least make it less cumbersome. I hope it lets me, it doesn't have to let me have room here. Sorry about that. So it's going to be, I'm going to rewrite it up here. Sometimes it goes a little crazy. We were saying that it has uh, one plus radical three over one minus radical three. We have to rationalize this by the conjugate, which is one plus radical three. And let's simplify our denominator first because that's easier in the sense that you could do it faster. This is gonna give us radical three times radical three is radical nine. So the square root of nine is three. So now you have on the bottom one minus three. So your denominator already is gonna be negative. One minus three is negative two. And then on the top, you just have to um, distribute, right? Make sure you know the distributive property. One times one is one. One times radical three. So and then you do radical three times one, then radical three times radical three. So when you simplify all of that, you end up with four plus two radical three. And from here, you can reduce it because four divided by negative two is gonna give you negative two. So your final answer is negative two minus radical three, or 
you can show distribution. So you have negative outside the parentheses, a negative one. And then inside you would have two plus radical three. All right, either way, depending on your instructor. So I hope this was helpful. I know it's very short, but I hope that this kind of gives you an idea of how you might encounter uh, these pr uh, problems and how to use these formulas. Um, and that's pretty much it for this video. I would like to do a little bit more, but like I said, I'm always having some kind of interruption or something. But if it was helpful, let me know. And if you find this channel helpful, please subscribe. Please give me a like and help me with this. Uh, we're growing. We're growing. And I'm so excited about this because I can't wait to share more and more math with everyone that I can. Thank you all.